Okay, last episode we built this. We have no idea if it will fly yet. I will demonstrate that it probably will, and I will even gamble as much as to put Bob Kerman, someone who doesn't know what prograde locking is, or a yes, standard regular SAS is, uh, into the pilot seat, and we will fly this completely manually. Now you are going, what the hell, you don't have any revert capability, and you would be right in saying so. Uh, yeah, we were going to fly the flappy plane. We were going to bring uh, Bob Kerman for maximum science profit. He's going to reset all our experiments and we're going to be able to run them as many times as possible. We'll also make sure to do a, to pay for this somehow. And we're going to take anything that's below, n below a value because that means we don't actually have to get up. Just making sure that all the uh, survey points are near to us. We take a uh, temperature survey, we do have a th thermometer, we have a crew on board, so we can take that, and that's our two contracts. And uh, yeah, let's take our flapper plane out. Good on us, yes, launch from the runway. Now, how am I going to fly this without stability assist? Well, a feature few people know about is that we have... Um, well, you have your pitch yaw on your roll. We can do that all day, all night. Uh, that goes from 0 to 100 instantly. That's probably not what we want. Uh, also, when you're flying a plane, what you will tend to see is that when you give no control input, it will sort of deviate either up or down, depending on how your aerodynamic surfaces are aligned. And that's obviously not something we want either. We want to just uh, leave the controls as is and have it go in a direction keeping an altitude. We want to have some sort of autopilot. Uh, we are playing without mods, so we don't have atmospheric autopilot or mechjab or whatever to keep us in the air at a certain altitude. But what we do have is if you hold in ALT while pressing your control setup, you have something called a trim. And if you look at the uh, pitch over here, I'm, press, I'm holding ALT and pressing uh, S several times to pitch up. And we can adjust this to whatever. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Remember how I said we didn't really have a good place for those landing gear? Uh, as you can see, it's like right below our center mass, so we're really pivoting around that. Uh, so what we probably don't want to do is have a pitch up passively like so, because that's just going to put, push our engines into the ground. Uh, we'll do that once we actually pick up some speed. Anyways, uh, we have done all the science here. I see a major design flaw in this. I said, okay, let's bring Bob, uh, because he's a scientist, he can re reset these uh, experiments, except he can't get out. But that will be a future revision. Yeah, let, 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 let's just fly this. I'm, I'm sick and tired of waiting. I have activated my brakes. If you press this, you toggle the action group. If you press B, that's only good for as long as you keep the button down. So, important distinction to make there. Anyways, uh, we activate our engines. As they come online, since our brakes are active, they're going to push us that way, and we will pivot back onto all three landing gear. How did I know that would was going to happen? And then we are going to unbreak the brakes. And we're going to have to be very careful when we pitch up here because we have a very low clearance here. But if we just pitch up with the trim, notice how beautiful a take of that was. It was almost realistic. I don't know. And now we can sort of control our heading, our descent, our... Uh, like, if we wanted to fly straight here, we can adjust our pitch a bit and see that no hands, just flying straight. Amazing. Uh, we didn't have to design the plane in a particular way to have a certain thrust offset at a certain deflection or whatever. Uh, it just works. And um, if you're playing without a joystick, as I believe most people are, then 
knowing about these trims are absolutely crucial to flying the plane. Also we can notice that since we've designed this very aerodynamically, even with these basic engines, we can pick up insane speeds here. Uh, another thing is to cancel your trim, as I just did, you hold ALT and press X. Uh, could be very useful if you were to say like add some roll trim and wonder why won't my plane stop spinning? Especially useful when you're trying to land and you would try to sit here and spam roll and it would just go back there. Control X cancels your trim and then you can fly this as you would. So that's how you fly airplanes with a keyboard. Very useful thing to have because otherwise airplanes are a pain in the rectum to fly in this game. Anyways, we had some contracts. We were going to visit this point. Uh, we can activate navigation there. Uh, it will show up as a blinking thing here. And you can see here, we only have these two control surfaces for roll, but we have a lot of roll authority, more than we actually need. Uh, what you can do if you feel that is an issue is to limit the authority. We were going to take a temperature reading here, I believe, so log temperature. We have that. We're going to save that. We're going to save that. Yeah, and it was Nerds Folly. I'm pretty sure that's named after someone. I'm not gonna promote other people on my channel, that's just shooting myself in the foot. Anyways, uh, da, 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 da. heading over to the second survey, and you can see these survey contracts are really easy. It's a really good source of money and science if you haven't actually collected the science from the particular biomes they appear in. As soon as you know, uh, as long as you know how to effectively fly airplanes, and uh, and yeah, once you learn how to design airplanes yourself, uh, those uh, those lessons will carry on directly into building space planes and uh, shuttles and all that, and you won't have the whole oh my god I can't pitch up what's wrong with my aircraft oh my god I can't take off the runway all of that you can learn with these basic aircraft and then uh, you can go on to the advanced stuff l later on already knowing that and it will be easy as pie Now, another thing we really want to do is to land someplace and take data from there. We've already landed at the grasslands, so I suppose we aim for the highlands. Uh, landing a plane in the mountains may seem hard. Uh, so here's a free tip for you. If you go around this mountain range, like the KC is over here, so we have just approached the mountain range from the usual direction, but uh, on the other side here there's a fairly flat area right here. See here? That's totally landable. So if you want to get some mountain da data, as we do, head over there instead. So whatever I said about landing in the highlands, uh, forget about that. Landing on these peaks, well first of all you have the issue of the uneven terrain. Second of all, you're going to generate less lift since you're f further up. Uh, down here uh, and both of those issues are largely resolved. I mean, of course, it's not f as flat as the runway. It's flatter than the runway it used to be uh, on upgraded back in the day. Back in the day, I say, they fixed that very recently. And the thing we want to do here, the w number one way to bleed off speed in stock aerodynamics is to perch over. Yeah. Remember what we did where we put the center mass and center of lift near to one another. That allows us to pull really steep turns should we want to. That's something you won't be able to do if your center of lift is way beyond your center mass. Also, if your relative area of control deflection here is very low compared to your total lifting area. And that is very rarely the issue people have. I mean, they love to 
people love to spam control surfaces and then they don't realize that maybe it's not more control surfaces they need, they just need to place everything better. And um, now you know how to do that, so now you are all set. So, to land this thing, we have turned off the engines, we are going to cruise in here, and you want to land with no vertical velocity, is the thing, right? And let's just engage the brakes. This can be sort of a pain because what we also want to do is deactivate our pitch. Because if we have our pitch active on the ground, it will push our tailplane into the ground, remember. So I remembered <laughs> to deactivate my pitch like way after I landed and we almost had an accident. Uh, so far, remember, we have never even engaged ASAS. We have been flown this entirely manually and it's been smooth sailing because we have designed the plane right. To make uh, these financially feasible, this is a very expensive aircraft, all things considered, like it, all the parts cost something like, I don't remember, 7,000, 8,000, we could go back and check. Um, so we obviously want to recover as much as possible and uh, since we have designed this carefully it should be easy to take off even from a place like this. Remember, we have a lot of control authority, so we can do some pretty sick turns right here. Uh, remember, this is a no revert hardcore save, so kids don't do this at home, but uh, we can pull some serious stunts here. Going up against this ridge, just barely coming over it, and uh, all that jazz, and always flying using um, trim. Because if we were to jank on the controls uh, like we would normally, we would do this and faceplant and stall and uh, it wouldn't be pretty. So trim, trim maneuvers everyone, yay! Remember, we only brought 100 units of liquid fuel. We have used half of that, and we have been flying very rec recklessly. You can get over there and back for like half the fuel expenditure we just underwent. Uh, fuel expenditure, I'll just add that, is a function of your altitude. So if you want to be doing good fuel economy, you just head up into the atmosphere uh, higher up, than we are currently at and uh, well it's a function of uh, altitude and uh, speed it's a function of airflow let's say and your airflow is going to be lower the more rarefied the atmosphere is and uh, and your drag will also be lower the more rarefied your atmosphere is so fu good fuel economy means flying as hi high up as possible Anyways, we want to slow down so we can do some crazy maneuvers here. Every maneuver we do is going to slow us down. If we just do that, you can see that we're picking up speed. If we're rolling, we're not picking up speed. Most effective though is to use our big control surfaces to deflect a lot over here. And you can see, even going straight, we're going to lose speed. This is not fair on aerospace where you're going to have a lot of problems slowing down. But deflect a bit more, since the runway isn't that long, we're going to come in here. I'm going to feel exactly how much pitch trim we want landing in this thing. Probably something like that, I don't know. And then just activate our brakes so that when we touch down, we're going to stop. And as soon as we touch down, we deactivate our pitch. 
so that doesn't come and bite us in the ass. And then we just have to steer to stay on the runway, which uh, these early wheels have a lot of trouble doing for you. So, quick and easy flight. We uh, got these done. That paid something, I guess. And then we recovered the vessel for a lot of times. And this is uh, actually way more preferable to just driving a rover around and hitting all the KSE biomes. So that's a good way to get over the uh, career mode hump, so to say. Yeah, I think that will do for an episode. So uh, I will see you next episode.